When I was a kid, I couldn't afford to go to RM Sotheby's auctions and spend the 60 pounds to get in and view the cars. Now, 10 years later, I've been invited by RM themselves to come and film the Dare to Dream collection, one of Canada's best car collections. If you have a dream, which I believe you probably do, never ever quit on it. Whatever your dream is, keep going, don't give up, because you can do it. You really can do it. Whatever your dream is, never ever quit. We're now mic'd up and it is time to tour the entire collection. I've got my friend Keegan here. Now, Keegan, introduce yourself, what do you do? I'm the communication specialist at RM Sotheby's. And he is the man <laughs> responsible. Pretty much every time I come and film a collection with RM, it's thanks to Keegan and Ethan. And they invite me out to film these insane collections like this one today, which is probably Canada's best car collection. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely up there. With probably my favorite hypercar in the collection. I just think this is so cool. Maserati MC12, one of 50 ever built. And how many in Canada? Publicly, there's three. Publicly, <laughs> we'll there's leave it three. at that. <laughs> so this is one of those three. And yeah, yeah, really cool car. I mean, the mm -hmm. MC12 was to signal Maserati's, you know, step back into the racing world. They won the 2005 GT1 insur or endurance class with their MC12 GT1. And, you know, it's just so much more dramatic than, say, the Enzo. Uh, the, the sweeping lines, the size of the thing. I mean, it's the scale of it. You can't really understand until you see it in person, but it's an incredible car. And inside, you have literally no mirror and no rear visibility whatsoever. And next to it, we have its sister, the Enzo. Yeah, yeah, which was actually the first Enzo shown in North America. So in 2003, the car was unveiled at the Paris Auto Show. Then they brought this one to Cavalino Classic in Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, the second owner of this car repainted the wheels in this like gunmetal finish, which I think looks incredible on this car, but yeah, really cool to see it yeah. here. I like the gunmetal. And then an F50, one of 349 in the world. Gated, open top, rear wheel drive, V12. And this is actually the most expensive car estimated to be auctioned as well as the LaFerrari. They're about the same price. Crazy to think that this is worth as much as this or vice versa. And yet the Enzo yeah. and the F40 are both worth less. And the MC12 is worth even less than the Enzo. Never Testarossa. Know. A kind staple in a Ferrari collection. Kind of a cheap to. car in this collection of Ferraris though. I think it is the cheapest. Because the next cheapest is the 550 Maranello. When I say cheap, it's not cheap. This is still a gated manual 550 with an estimate of $250,000. <laughs> Rosso Corsa. You don't see many 550s in red on black. Front engine V12 too. The best from Ferrari, of and course. Then SF90 to match and a 288 GTO. This was Ian Poulter's old 288 GTO. So he's got the proper big five Ferraris. Yeah, yeah. These cars are also insanely expensive. 3.7 to 4 million. So it's just below the LaFerrari in the F50. And then here we have the Veyron. This was owned by Simon Cow, actually. He drove it twice in the time he owned it and then sold it and got banned from buying Bugattis in the future. Black with stainless. It is perfect. Black on black. Really nice spec. Next to a Carrera GT. I mean, fantastic. Such a great car. One of the greatest V10s ever built. So next That's to arguable. can't skip this the 250 Lusso yeah the GTL Berlinetta this thing is a beauty I mean the color is stunning it's like a it's a burgundy more than it's red but the quilted leather on the interior it is just stunning yeah I just love old cars I think they're more special than the new stuff personally that's my opinion and then next to an F40 my favorite of the big five Ferraris I think it's just the coolest Ferrari ever made. And then Ford GT and the Golf Heritage livery. Right yeah, there's a bit of a theme here with the uh, Golf Heritages. You'll see with a couple of it, different cars around the collection. It's there's got a few, a few Golf cars. Yeah. Next to a 2012 original Launch Aventador. Launch car. I mean, there's no big wings or crazy arrow trying to compete with the design. It's perfect. Simple, clean. And then a Mira SV. Probably the coolest. Lambo in this collection, that's for sure, if not car. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, super low mileage. I mean, sub 500 kilometers, a beautiful restoration with a blue interior. Maybe the lowest mileage mirror in the world. Potentially, mirror SV, mirror SV potentially. And then 300 SL Roadster, absolutely stunning. It's got the red interior on China blue, which is actually the color I was gonna paint my Evo 2 until I decided to do a lighter baby blue because my body kit was so bad. <laughs> and then a DB5 right here. The reason he bought this, the owner, is because it reminds him of James Bond. And when he was a kid, James Bond had just come out and he said when he got older, he would be a James Bond himself. And then he bought the car, he did it. So 
cool little story on this one. It means yeah, a lot to Yeah, absolutely. Me. Beautiful car. Shelby GT 350 and a Porsche Carrera 2.7 RS. This is a touring model, correct? Yeah, not the lightweight. This is the touring, so a bit more driver friendly for the road. Again, one of the greatest driving Porsches of all yeah, time. Yeah, it's so cool. Keep in mind, this collection has over 150 cars, I believe, and there's a whole nother building, a vault in the back there, which we're gonna be touring later. I'm also gonna interview the owner in this video and find out how on earth he affords all these cars and why is he selling them all now? What, what changed in his life? <clears throat> right here yeah. with a Series 1 E-Type. Enzo Ferrari called this the most beautiful car he'd ever seen. Next to a Porsche Carrera 356. Yeah, Countach 25th a. anniversary right here. And a Countach metal artwork. I'm not sure what you call the sculpture. Renowned sculpture artist, Benedict Radcliffe. And uh, he does this, you know, he's built a bunch of cars with these uh, wire shapes. And, you know, Miles was lucky enough to get this one from uh, one of our previous auctions. But an absolute incredible art piece for any car collection. And this thing, which really stands out in the collection, was this, a 1915 Ranch Lang? Rauch and Lang. Or Lang, Rauch sorry. Lang. Yeah, one of the earliest car manufacturers. Really interesting piece and just so cool to see amongst a sea of, you know, mainly 50s plus modern cars. This was previously owned by Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, yeah, this is a Jerry Seinfeld car. I mean, incredible specification with the navy top on the silver. I, I, I love all the speedsters. I think the rear is so cool, but yeah, great car to have. Then here we've got a Porsche GT4 and a Bugatti Type 35. Now this is not a real one, it's a replica. Yeah, pure song recreation, which pure song is an extremely reputable, um, yeah, recreation group. And this is one of their, one of their best, the 35B. All of these cars are no reserve, so if you want to buy one, Everything. maybe get a good deal. Yeah, yeah, potentially. <laughs> this car theoretically could go for 700 grand. It could, it could go for 50 bucks, depending on what people want to bid. <laughs> yeah, anyways, this probably won't, but this 300 SL was actually copied off of Ralph Lauren's 300 SL. Yeah, yeah, so uh, he's actually got an amalgam model of Ralph Lauren's car, but he went to Ralph Lauren's collection to visit it, and he saw his 300 SL and wanted it Exactly, so you can see it's got that almost light brown silver color with this beautiful brown leather interior. Yeah, just fitted to look like Ralph Lauren's. And speaking of that theme, uh, back over by the Ferraris there, it's a sea of red in front of his office, matching Ralph Lauren's sea of red, red Ferraris in his collection. Oh. So uh, pretty interesting to see the uh, connections there. Speaking yeah. of clothing <laughs> and designer stuff, these shoes are all also being auctioned off in the auctions. Yeah, yeah, so we have uh, some of the shoes coming with the in-person auction and then we have an online auction for the rest of the sneakers and yeah, it's it's an incredible collection. You know, these are LeBron championship worn from the Cavs. Uh, you have all the Kith, Coca-Cola, Converse collabs. It's this pretty one? crazy. What's this? Looks special. Yeah, yeah, one of the first 14 pairs of Nikes. Right here, William Bill Bowerman, one of the creators of the original Nikes, and he used a waffle iron to actually put the tread in these shoes. And these are unworn, uh, super rare, and incredible piece for any sneaker head, but really interesting to see amongst hmm. these cars. And then right here, we've got a Messerschmitt. Yeah. <laughs> one of the weirdest cars in the collection. Very, yeah. very, very hard to find one. Yeah, coming condition. with that theme of diversity in the collection. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this'll do it. This is diverse. <laughs> yeah. Then we've got a Shelby GT500 and a Corvette C2. Now this split window, was actually the last split window Corvette ever built. And then we've got a Porsche, another 356 right here, a Jaguar XK150, and another Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. You can see he's got tons of memorabilia, which is also all gonna be sold in the auction. This Austin Healey right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this thing is beautiful. And then we've got a roof. Yeah, BTR slant nose or flat nose. You rarely see these, so. Yeah, really cool car. Next to a 997 GT2. One of yeah. the rarest Porsches in the modern Again, era. A great driver's car, which is a consistent theme in this collection. Porsche 959 right here. Yep, and, and a uh, DBAR1 Zagato. No, yeah. no top at all. And actually, if you look back over here, these are all coming for auction as well. He has him as well as Ralph Lauren's cars in amalgam models, 1 8 scale. Um, these are incredible pieces. Oh I wish gosh. I could just keep these for myself. This is like his own private museum, this facility. I've been to a lot of car collections, but I've never been to one that was this spectacular in layout. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And I mean, here you have an Amphicar. <laughs> Something totally different. One of the nicest ones in the world, I've been told, restored yeah. perfectly. On the cross from it is a Figaro. It's from England. 
It's a weird little Japanese car. It's designed to look like a 50s car, but it's actually from the 90s. And I can't skip this. Right here we have a Honda S600, which I've been told is the nicest one in the world. Pretty crazy to see it fully, perfectly restored. So if you want an S600, this is the best one you can buy. Yeah, you'll never find a better one. Just through here, we've got one of the highlights of the collection for me. This McLaren P1 in the <clears throat> yeah. Golf livery. This P1, super highly optioned, uh, over $100,000 in MSO special options. Uh, obviously, you have the Golf livery with metallic paint for both the blue and the orange, which is super rare. Typically, Golf paints are uh, flat, and they don't have that, have that depth from the metallic flake, but this one does. It's also got the carbon McLaren logo, and if you look on the interior, it has the Golf 12 o'clock stripe, a DRS and I-Pass button, and your driver settings are all with the Golf livery, which is so cool. Uh, really great attention to detail on this car, and one of the best, if not the best P1 in the world, in my opinion. But yeah, for spec-wise, on a non-GTR P1, this is insane. Next to a Dodge Viper, one of the first fifth generation Vipers ever built. Can't confirm, but it may or not, may not be the first one that was ever made. Right here, we've got a 32 Ford Coupe, restored by Chip Foos. Yeah, yeah, so this was like the first car he actually used to build his business, and uh, you know, it's sitting here, really. V8 Vantage, one of the first ones ever made. The best generation of the Vantage, in my opinion. Ford Thunderbird, as well as a BMW i8. You guys know I love the i8. Mandatory to have in a collection like You've this. You've got to have, it's one of the crown jewels, <laughs> I'd say, of this collection is probably this i8. This room, here we go, yeah, some of the race cars. Oh my cars. gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice really cars. cool. Yeah, so there's uh, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, you have race suits from like James Hinchcliffe and again, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon. You have top fuel car, you have a funny car, you have an indie car in the corner, you have a race sim, and this is all coming up for auction. Every single piece in this room. Crazy collection. Yeah, not And like I said, all. this is only part one of the collection just through here, this building right there is full of even more cars. So I'm gonna to tour that, it's nicknamed The Vault. But before I tour that, I've been given the opportunity to interview the owner of this collection, Miles Nadal, Canadian businessman. And he's gonna tell me why he started this collection, how he made the money to afford his car collection, and also why he's selling them. I just wanted to ask, first of all, I read that you started out as a photographer. What is it that you currently do? So let me go back to the beginning. Um, I took pictures of kids at summer camp and sports teams. I borrowed $500 from my Visa card. I started photography as a hobby hub at summer camp when I was 12. I used to t process pictures in the bathroom of our 900 square foot apartment. I always aspired to be a build a large enterprise. But from then I got into marketing and PR and advertising. We built what was the sixth largest advertising agency network in the world. But the key was that I wanted to make sure that I was in control of the destiny of the business. And as a family enterprise, uh, I'm able to control what we do, how we do what we do in the time horizons for both investing and monetizing. And what would you say was the biggest lesson that you learned in between starting off when you were a teenager to now? Well, it's a really good question. I believe a, a bunch of things. First of all, with wonderful human capital, with talent, there's not much you can't accomplish. David Ogilvy said, if you want to build a team of giants, surround yourself with people that are better than you and give them the incentive and motivation to continue their success. And obviously now I'm sitting in your collection of shoes and cars. What is your preference, the shoes or the cars? Most people that are obsessive compulsive are in the and business, not the or business. I am one of those people. Luxury is an investment you make with your heart, whether it's cars or sneakers or watches. In the case of the cars and sneakers, I've had one other privilege, and that is to share it with colleagues and partners and family and friends, charitable organizations. And that's been really valuable to me. And do you feel that these cars fulfill you? They are very enjoyable and very rewarding. I think the most rewarding thing has been the process of collecting. I think what I'm doing now will be even more rewarding, which is, you know, enjoying the ability to help others who are less fortunate. I don't think acquiring material things fill your soul helping others fill your soul is there a favorite car in the collection that means the most to you 
has a story? Well, I think uh, it's like having many children. You're not supposed to have favorites, but I, I think there's many wonderful stories. I would divide my my favorites into two categories, old and new. So the old ones, I would say the 1965 Aston Martin DB5, which is the James Bond car. When I was seven years old, James Bond was a big deal. I always said I would like to be the Jewish James Bond. The 1955 Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing, I saw that at Ralph Lauren's garage in 2012. I said I would like to have one. That's a, a real favorite. And then I would say of the modern supercars, of which we have many, the McLaren P1, which I had done with Frank Stephenson, who was the head of design of McLaren, did that as a one-of-one -one car. It's in, it's in the Gulf livery. That's a favorite of ours. And I would say the LaFerrari is another one. And I, I threw a third one in. It's the Porsche 918. Those are, you know, some of the more special ones. Yeah, and two last questions. Why are you selling the collection now? Well, I'm only selling part of it. When I turned 65, I started to say, okay, what brings me pleasure? And I, I love collecting. So I said, I'm going to take the 25 cars that I think I will use. I thought I could repatriate the capital and do something in a more meaningful way on many levels of which it will help me achieve my ultimate goal, which was to donate $180 million in my lifetime, of which I've donated about a third of that. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. And the final question is, what's your message to the world? 100 days from now, no one will ever remember the car you drove, the house you lived in, or for that matter, how much money you had in your bank account, but the world may be a different place if you need a difference in the life of a young person. No matter how modest your means are, no matter how substantial means you are, you have the commitment of time, talent, and treasure is something that is very meaningful. And you can never be too young. You can never have too modest means to be able to start making a meaningful difference. And I would encourage others to have the opportunity and privilege of and gratification that my family and I have enjoyed by trying to make a modest difference in the world. It's funny, one thing is my tagline that I have on my social media is I always tell people, never ever quit and then i say what's your dream so i thought it was kind of funny well, that he has dare to dream the reason why it's called dare to dream is because we have always believed that if you can dream it it can happen all right nice to talk to you thank you very much, much for your Mark. time really appreciate it pleasure you guys are terrific part two of the dare to dream car collection here in toronto canada <clears throat> and this is the vault is the nickname of this place a big ominous black building which inside has some of the coolest cars but outside yeah. one of his personal mechanics has this pretty cool e46 with a csl front bumper just thought i'd show that because i like it Anyways, welcome in the first car we have right here is a mercedes 3.6 280 se chocolate brown and then this one one of the most special cars the last xj220 ever built yeah finishing a Beautiful metallic midnight blue. Beautiful color. This car actually belonged to the Jaguar private collection for years before he bought it. And then 12C. Again, a great example. Uh, really nice. It's actually it's got metallic brown with every yeah, yeah. carbon option you can get. Like the interior is full carbon fiber everywhere. Ferrari F430. Beautiful. It's TDF blue. Yeah, yeah, it looks, looks like, like it. TDF blue. M3 E92 race car. Yeah, yeah, just a personal race car in the collection, which is pretty cool. Got a couple of police Got some cars. Decommissioned Toronto police cars, which is pretty cool. We're gonna get to what I'm most excited about. Yeah, the fun race cars. <laughs> these, these are all replicas, right? Yeah, recreations by Pure Sang or other, you know, reputable, you know, recreation companies. D type Jaguar. Le Mans Legend. Such a sick car. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Got a Cobra Daytona. This is probably a Superformance. Yeah, you can tell it's Superformance by the logo on the wheel. Replica, very, very nice car. And then the car that I would buy from the entire collection is actually this one right here. A Porsche 917, definitely my favorite car in the collection. Yeah, this would be fun to take out on the, uh, on the track, that's for sure. Dude, like, <laughs> this thing is nuts. It's going up for about $250,000. I don't even know how you fit in here. Like, it's so tiny and cramped. But super cool car. And then the Porsche 962 Rothmans. I've never seen a replica of one of these before. Going up for 100, 140,000. 
No reserve. What would you rather have? The 917 or the 962? This is a Raynard Formula Ford race car. And then a Dallara, an Indy car. And this is an actual Indy car that was this used? This is an actual Indy car, correct. Okay, wow. Two <coughs> F1 cars. Now these are models. As you can see, there's nothing actually in them. They're made out of, I guess, fiberglass, I'm assuming? I'd assume so, yeah. And they're designed to be placed on your wall. So maybe Stradman will buy one of these as garage art. One stock car, a Dodge, his personal race Challenger car. stock car. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then we've got a Z3 GT, Z4 GT3 car. Yeah, this thing would be a blast to take out on the track. Jeep Willys, you got With a this. trailer, complete. Yeah, with a, the full set. Pretty cool. Yeah, super cool. Then we've got a Mercedes SL Roadster. I'm seeing these in pretty much every collection. Like everybody has one of these, which is pretty cool. One and of the most iconic cars of I, all time. <laughs> I think this is an Isetta M because look, it's got the M and it's <laughs> going straight. all through the interior. I was going to say it needs an M badge on it. <laughs> of course. And we've got 993 Turbo right here. Black on black on black. Two more police cars here. An Accord. Yep. We've got a black cord right here. Mini Cooper, proper <laughs> British whip. Taste of home for you. And a bug eye Sprite, <clears throat> very cute car. 74 Dino. Ferrari Dino right here. There's and also the uh, Pope The Pope 500L. Mobile. <laughs> this Fiat 500, you might think, why is this in the collection? Look who's in it. This the was himself. the Pope car, donated to the Pope by Fiat. But that is the collection, the Dare to Dream collection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. So remember, Whatever your dream is, never ever quit. You can do it because 10 years ago, I couldn't even afford a ticket to come into an RM Sotheby's auction and here I am getting invited to film collections for them. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll be continuing the 190 EVO 2 project. Can you feel my heart is